A genius developer suffocating in rules and paperwork. A business in crisis with no answers in sight. A group of software rebels fighting to break free. Will they rise to glory or will they crash and burn? There's only one way to find out. Hello and welcome to our video series on must-read books for DevOps professionals. And if you missed the first two videos, check out the little playlist on the right to catch up. And today's featured book is The Unicorn Project, a novel about developers, digital disruption, and thriving in the age of data. It's written by Gene Kim, who also wrote The Phoenix Project. And some of you may already know him as an award-winning IT leader who played a big role in shaping the DevOps movement. So let's dive right in. Now, The Unicorn Project is actually written as the sequel to The Phoenix Project, which Gene Kim co-wrote back in 2013. But don't worry, you don't need to read The Phoenix Project to enjoy this one. Although, if you have read both, you'll notice something pretty cool. The Unicorn Project is also written in a novel format, which makes it super easy and engaging to read. But that's not the only thing that's the same. In fact, both books are set in the same company, follow the same timeline, and even have the same set of characters, like our little own uh, Marvel Universe, but for DevOps. But both books are written from two different perspectives and share important insights. So I would suggest adding both to your list and it doesn't matter which one you read first. Now, the Unicorn Project centers around Maxine Chambers, a brilliant senior developer that has spent over eight years at Parts Unlimited. This is an auto parts company that has been market leader for decades, but has now hit troubled waters. And we see an example of that from the very first page. One day, Maxine returns from her vacation to find out that the company faced a technical disaster that caused salary delays for thousands of employees. And guess what? Even though it wasn't Maxine's fault, the company blames her so that they can avoid bad press. They even reassign her to the Phoenix Project for four months to lay low while the whole incident blows over. Now, the Phoenix Project was a very important initiative for the company. It was supposed to help their customers place orders online, anytime, anywhere. But here's the thing, it's now already three years late, has cost over $20 million and has nothing to show for it. Struggling to compete uh, with other e-commerce competitors, the company's profit and stock are nose diving with no solution in sight. No wonder Maxine is furious when she finds out this is how she'll spend her corporate jail time. Now, from the first day of joining the Phoenix project, she knows it's a complete mess. Everyone works in complete isolation with no feedback or communication with each other. And the red tape and countless rules are a nightmare to work with. She tries to get her build environment going, but for that, she has to raise a thousand tickets and wait for approvals. No wonder the project has been delayed by three years. And just when she thinks things can't get worse, they do. Their CEO suddenly announces that they are going to roll out the Phoenix project within the next week, whether it's ready or not. All hell breaks loose and Maxine watches it unfold in front of her eyes. And of course, the launch ends up being a total disaster. Stuck in a system full of incompetence, politics, and red tape, Maxine feels utterly powerless and alone. Thankfully, she's not alone. Soon, fates conspire to introduce her to a secret group in the company called The Rebellion. They're the organization's best and bright engineers rebelling against a rotting system. Their mission? To build an engineering culture that gives people the freedom, safety, and tools to be their productive best. Over the course of the story, Maxine begins to see patterns in the company's culture that damage productivity and hold it back. During one of their meetings at a bar, Maxine meets the bartender who happens to be Dr. Eric Reed, who is a veteran and someone that Parts Unlimited had been trying to hire on their board for a while. If you watched our previous video about Phoenix Project, then you should know Eric. Together with Eric and the Rebellion, she fights the system and introduces the five ideals that cover the DevOps culture. This way, they transform the way the whole company works to deliver better value to our customers, sooner, safer, and happier. The whole story is a roller coaster full of relatable characters and real world situations. This keeps you engaged and eager to find out what happens next. Now, the Unicorn Project manages to tie together key concepts that every DevOps and IT professionals should know. And its biggest takeaway is the five ideals that helps the rebellion introduce the DevOps culture to help Parts Unlimited thrive. So here's a quick overview of all five of them. Number one, locality and simplicity. Now imagine a culture where developers can make code changes in a single location without negatively affecting 
other teams or other applications or other departments. This is locality and it reduces our dependency on other teams. But to achieve it, we need simplicity because the more complex we make things, the harder it is to keep track of cause and effect. We should aim to simplify our code and processes as much as possible. Now, one of the analogies used was four strands of yarn that hang independently. That's a simple system. And once you braid them together, you have complicated them. Both could fulfill the same goal, but one is dramatically easier to change than the other. In a simple system, you can change one string independently of the other. Now, moving on to the second ideal, focus, flow, and joy. A great IT culture is one where everyone has the freedom to focus on real work and really be in the creative zone. This idea shared that developers should be doing what they do best instead of waiting for approvals and overworking to the point of burnout. As a developer, you want to be able to work on one thing fully focused without distractions, unnecessary meetings and other useless toils. You don't want to be multitasking or switching contexts every few minutes. Instead of working blindly on small pieces of the puzzle, it helps to see how our work fits together in the bigger picture. The third ideal is the improvement of daily work. So this one is all about paying down technical debt every single day to reduce unnecessary complexity in our work. Now, just like simplicity in our first ideal, it helps us continuously do things better and faster. The key word here is improving daily instead of letting it all pile up till disaster strikes. So either you're actively working on your software or system or it is degrading as these systems are not natural and have no self-care or maintenance systems like we have in our natural systems. Improve or degrade. There is no middle ground. Now, ideal number four is psychological safety. Now, this is the big one. From the very beginning of the story, the Unicorn Project shows us just how damaging a culture of fear can be. This is what the fourth ideal seeks to destroy. Psychological safety is crucial to keeping employees motivated and productive which ultimately helps companies succeed. It's about building a blameless culture where people feel safe to experiment, point out issues, and speak honestly without fear of backlash. And finally, we come to the fifth and the final ideal, which is customer focus. At the end of the day, a company has got to create value for the customer if it wants to succeed. So it's important to keep questioning whether something we do at work is helping us create customer value. If it's not, then we should reevaluate its importance to our processes. Aside from the five ideals, the Unicorn Project also mentions a couple of other important concepts. For example, it mentions that it's important to remember who the ultimate customer is and how you help them. As organizations grow in size, job roles often get so specialized and disconnected that the end customer becomes a vague concept. For example, in my case, when I first started my career about 15 years ago as a support engineer, I never really knew uh, what the end customers used our products for. I was supporting servers uh, and I knew that there were lots of applications running on them, but I never really uh, had any connection with our customers or I didn't have any idea what app, what kind of applications were running on them or uh, how important that was uh, for the end customers. If I knew that, it could have helped me understand the purpose of my work uh, a bit more and helped me be more productive and, and be more motivated. But knowing how your product or service helps people can really motivate uh, employees. So suddenly the customer becomes a real human being instead of a faceless, nameless entity. Another important idea this book share uh, is the three metrics of a company's success. Customer satisfaction, employee engagement, and cash flow. If number one and two are given the attention they deserve, then the number three is automatically taken care of. The Unicorn Project does a fantastic job of driving home the DevOps philosophy. It opens up our minds to explore better and more joyful ways of working that help us and our company succeed. Personally, I found it a great read and recommend it to anyone interested in DevOps or IT in general. So if you enjoyed it, do give us a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comments below. Coming up next, we have reviews on the DevOps handbook and the effective DevOps book. So don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when they're out. So if you've watched the first two videos on the Phoenix project and this particular video on the Unicorn project, and if you have read the books, and if you're wondering, you know, now you have learned the concepts, but how do you actually go down and implement it? And uh, what are some of the use cases or case studies where other organizations have implemented these concepts? Then that's where the next two videos, the effective DevOps and the DevOps handbook come into play, because those 
Uh, unlike these, those are not in a story format. They are more full of case studies that will help you um, understand, uh, you know, getting down and uh, on, on how to actually implement it. Well, um, so that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, goodbye.